And guess what, you guys? You already what? can see. We got us a plus one in the building. Yes, we do. Not just a plus one. This young man has a heck of a story, and I can't wait to get in his business. So uh, I'm going to let wifey introduce. But I want to say shout out to Mobbish. I want to say shout out to SOS. I want to shout, shout out uh, a lot of the real homies, Big Kenny, and a whole bunch of the gang. That's out here making a difference right now. So I appreciate you guys. Without further ado, Terry. Without further ado, I told y'all the DMV is in the building tonight, right? I told y'all that. You know it. Yes, and we are all about the community, right? I told y'all that. So we have grabbed someone who also is all about the community, a community activist, a leader now. We have got making a difference. Cody Wayne. In the building. Let's put our hands together. Yeah. What's up, bro? Yeah. What's up? What's up? What's up? Hey, what's man, up? Hey, man, we're going to talk about it. So. Welcome. Yeah, over the thank city. you. It's an honor you. to be here. It's an thank honor to so be much. here. Thank you for coming and rocking with us, man. A lot of people been asking a lot of questions. Yes. So I said I'm gonna let Cody answer them questions. We need yeah, to get on I, there. I definitely. Yeah, am. yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. Definitely, definitely. So let's start from the beginning. Who is right? Cody Wynn? Let's talk about Cody Wynn. Who? Let the people know who is Cody Wynn. Uh, Cody Wynn, man, is a, a a guy that grew up in Washington D.C. all his life in the Trinidad neighborhood. A real guy. Trinidad. Honorable guy. And this man now, you know, community active, doing everything for my community, doing everything for my city, and just trying to stop this violence, man. I know so that's, that's that's a good thing. So let's start there. Let's back up a little bit. Um, how do how do we get to know Cody Wynn as who he is? Like he has a story. Let's talk about this backstory a little bit. Grew up um, in Trinidad. Grew up in Trinidad. Uh, we know you're a Washington native. So you went to Dunbar, right? Went to Dunbar, graduated. Graduated. Yeah, yeah. Nineteen ninety nine. Yeah. Okay. okay. You tell a little bit. You yeah, tell a little. Yeah. So we're right, right, right around that same um, era. So that era was treacherous. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I survived it. Obviously, you survived it as well. Was so that like the nineties? Yeah, that late eighties, early nineties era 90s. was a vicious era for the Washington D.C. era. Um, it was tough. Okay. So let's talk about it a little bit because you had some pitfalls. Let's talk about that first time that you ever faced your one of your dilemmas with the uh, officers or whatever the case is, with, with criminal activity uh, or whatever you, you may want to call it. You know, like uh, you just explained, you know, that the, uh, the crack uh, epidemic back in the early, the late 80s, early 90s was definitely, uh, took its toll on me. Uh, like you said, I graduated from Dunbar mm -hmm. uh, in 1999, had scholarships to go to college, but I gave them up for the streets. I was infatuated mm -hmm. with the streets. Uh, <laughs> You know, infatuated. I, I wanted the money. I wanted the jury. I wanted the fast cars. I wanted yeah, it all. And I, I knew college it. wouldn't give it to me. I get it. So, you I know, I went it. out there, man, and uh, started hustling at the age of 17. Caught my first charge when I was 17. 17. Just so as soon as you jumped off the porch, good, they grabbed you. Yeah, they so grabbed you. had a distribution case. Yeah. Okay. And so then after that, you was like, okay, well, did you say I'm going to figure out a better way to do this thing and I'm going to come back or... How did that uh, work for you? Well, nah, I just told myself that I was going to graduate from uh, school, from high school, because I owed that to my mother. That's but right. I was still infatuated uh, in the streets when I was 17. I had mm -hmm. my first car. You know, so, so I'm driving balling, to school. I'm dri you know, she had buy me some clothes, but I had to change them because I done made some moves and got me some Jordans in a new outfit. And she <laughs> can't oh, see what know. I'm wearing. That's so, you right. know, at the age of 18, uh, I caught another distribution. That was my first adult case. Okay. Okay. Did you get? Did you get? So did you go to prison for that? Like, what uh, did you have to? What, what made you have to serve time? Actually, sit down. Yeah. Uh, actually, sit actually, down. actually, in two thousand four, uh, you went away. I went away. Uh, I didn't come home to uh, two thousand fourteen. I went away for ten years. Uh, me and my co-defendants was charged with uh, multiple murders mm -hmm. uh, that we had to face. Uh, I stood over DC jail fighting my case uh, eight and a half years. Wow. Uh, no sentencing? No sentencing because uh, with, with murder, they can take you to trial up to two and a half years. So I had to fight each one of them individual. So as I got okay. finished with one, okay. they charged me with another one. So, wow. you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, my first time when I was found not guilty, I come back to the jail. And I think I'm going home, and they say, Mr. Wynn, you need to go with them. So it was the, they rebooked me again, and they charged me. So they Are did you that. Serious? They did that process uh, five times, and on, on top so, of that. So, yeah. so wait, back up. So for people that? who not really familiar, you didn't you didn't transfer out of the prison system, catch a charge, go back into the prison system. No. You was already incarcerated. Yeah, I was already. And then they tried to stack charges on. Yeah. more murder charges. More murder charges so while you were in prison. Yeah. 
Gotcha. Yeah, and I mean, you know, uh, it was crazy because I was in uh, solitary confinement for five years. No visit, no mail, no phone calls. Wait, okay, and so let's let's back up. A lot of people, so the reason I'm doing breaking this down is because some, some of my audience are not familiar with doing time, being in prison, so they don't even understand what solitary confinement is. So let's explain to the people. For those who don't know, that's like 23 and 1, what we call yeah. it. Yeah. So it's 23 hours a day out of 24, you're locked down. Mm. Right in a cell, and then they let you out to do what? Uh, thirty minutes of rec and thirty minutes of shower. Thirty minutes of rec, thirty minutes of shower. When I tell you, you have to be really mentally tough to do even thirty days in a box when you do years in a box. So how did that affect you mentally? Uh, because you were still young, it, right? Yeah, and it, it it made me grow as a man. Uh, it made me grow as a man, and people don't know. Uh, when I was a uh, uh, when I got uh, arrested and I went to prison uh, over the jail. Uh, I really wasn't a good reader, but after doing time, been reading the Bible back and forth, reading the Quran back and forth, reading every magazine, my reading skills uh, jumped up very heavy. You know, wow. uh, I learned a lot. You know, I read a lot, but also, you know, talking to people. Mm -hmm. uh, I knew I was special when you know uh, guys used to come back from court, and I talked to them, and I, you know, we had conversations. And they listen to me, you know what I'm saying? Because I was going through a lot at the time, but you would never know it the way I carried myself. Wow. Right. So they respected the way you was doing your time and you were still giving them advice and trying to help them along the way. Yeah. And yeah. get them some yeah. advice. So shout out to uh, Young E-Class, too, because your story kind of mirrors his a little bit. And um, I just mm -hmm. like how he transitioned, just like what you're getting ready to tell me. And um, he was a young man as well. So you was young. When went you in first... at 2004. Yeah, I went in yeah. 2004. I was 23. And so now they piling on murder charges. Yeah. You beat the first one. Uh huh. So they coming back now. You can't get released, Mr. Wynn. We gotta take you here. Yeah. So I so sit over what? there. I sit over there a year and a half, and I uh, went to trial again. Was found not guilty again. Mm. Okay. So now just two times, mm -hmm. right? So you so you looking like Teflon, right? Now you, two times. They come back again. So they come back again and they charged me and I didn't. Uh, I sat over there for nine months and they couldn't come back with a indictment, so they dismissed that one. Wow. So when you first beat that second charge, you thinking now I'm free file. Yeah, I'm thinking like it's I can over. Go home now. Yeah, I can go home. Leave me and alone. And then when they pass you down for the nine months, now you're doing nine months and you sit. So how are you thinking about your situation? Because now, because you supposed to be gone twice. Yeah, yeah. So now it's that third time. How you feeling? Like now you don't know what the odds are. Like I, you don't really know what your fate gonna be. I right? mean, you start losing hope, and not just that. When you got a family, you know, you got kids. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you you know you you know you love your mother and things like that. You just thinking about if I'm ever see him again. That's right. You know what I'm saying? It's like that. But you know, I never lost my faith though. So I what, that's what I was gonna say. What kept you strong? Like, did you have the family support? Did you have somebody who rode with you through the sense and do these doing these these bits? Did you have somebody who supported Man, you? Man, I, I had a girlfriend every year. Like you know. <laughs> <laughs> I had a girlfriend every year, they man. They drop all, yeah, they no drop pick all, up. Another pick up. If yeah. you write me, then I'm gonna set it all. But you know, uh, to you know, I had a little uh, supported out in the world. But it was the it was the guys that, uh, and it's crazy, it was the guys that was locked up with me. That some of the guys that we was even beefing on the street, but we found a bond and got Indeed. closer than uh, wow. some of the guys I even know on the street. Wow. So that was the blessed part. So. Now, the third time, you're doing the nine months. So after that, they come to you. And how do you suffice the nine months? Like, you, you're nine months in. So they say, okay, we overturn that indictment. So you, you clear. Yeah, so we nine months in, uh, I go back to court. And I'm thinking, you know, they saying that, uh, they saying that uh, you know, they don't got an indictment. So I'm thinking I'm free. I go back to the jail. You know, my thing now, I'm looking for cars. I'm looking for uh, my cars. I'm going <laughs> you with them. Your way back yeah, I'm out going the door, with right? them. But, you know, uh, they was like, they was in the van. So when I got right there, they charged me again. Are you serious? Yeah, they charged me again. They did not that. want you out. Yeah. So now you on your fourth murder charge. Yeah. And so now, what the sentencing look like now? So they just put you on a hold? Uh, you know, I was already in the hole. Uh, Ben, though, they said I was a high profile case, and they were saying that, uh, Witnesses was getting intimidated and things mm -hmm. like that. And I uh, hear I'm over to jail, so you can record my call, so you know it wasn't me. Right. So, but they still locked me down. So I'm still locked down this process when they charged me with the fourth one. So now, what what age were you at that point? Uh, at that point, I was twenty twenty seven or twenty eight. 
So you still fairly young, man. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. I'm still young. Fighting your fourth. Yeah, fighting my fourth. All right. So now, how we get past this one? Uh, Brady, Brady, uh, Brady violations. Uh, the government withheld a lot of evidence that uh would even kept me locked up for this case over you know over a year. Mm -hmm. So uh, this case was dismissed uh for Brady issues. Wow. And you had already sat for how long? A year and a half. So nine yeah. months, then a whole another year and a half. A whole another that. year and a half. So, so now that's four. Yeah, that's four. So now you finally can breathe a little bit. Say, I'm great. Come on. Yeah, I'm gone. Ain't nothing else. I know y'all. I, yeah, I know y'all. Man, I know this I, it. I know y'all ain't got nothing else right, for me now. I, I know y'all don't. I mean, I'm I'm like this is it right here. Like okay. God, now it's time to see my kids and everything. So now it's time to celebrate. I'ma hug my loved ones and now what? What happened? Uh, I get back. And you know I don't see nobody then, but I'm just still in the holding pen, and I'm waiting to go back. Uh, then they come again. So this case right here, when they charged me with this one, this the one that got me, you know, feeling low because this the one that I'm like, God, Lee, how y'all gonna do this to me? And I knew this was kind of like a touchy little situation mm -hmm. about you know the, who I was charged for and everything mm -hmm. like that. So uh, I sat down and uh, I went to trial in this one. I sat down two and a half years. This was the last one. I sat down two and a half years, uh, and then I went to trial and was found not guilty. Uh, me and my co-defendants, but I uh, lost on current pistol water license and obstruction of justice. So they sentenced me to ten years. When I went to the uh, the FBOP, that's the federal, mm -hmm. the court of appeals overturned my case. Mm -hmm. And you know what I'm saying? And I'm at the I'm at the cell one day, and my case manager said, "Pack up, you going home tomorrow." Just like that. Just like that. Really? Mm -hmm. So you weren't you you weren't even expecting that? No, I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting to do my little time for the structure and justice, the current mm -hmm. of license. So he had already charged you with that. Yeah, that was part of you know when I when part of my murder uh, murder charge. You know they could charge you with less including offenses. Right, right, right. So uh -huh. I beat all the big stuff and lost on obstruction of justice, the current of license. And they still had sent you to ten for that. Yeah, sent me for ten for that. Mm. And you was, mm -hmm. what, a, just a few months in on the 10th? Yeah, I was, uh, you know, no, I was actually uh, the two and a half years. Two and a half years. That was years, uh, the okay. two and a half years on the 10th. On the 10th. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and doing the two and a half, man. Wow. Man. You went through yeah. a lot. That's a lot. I mentally mean, tough. And, you have to be mentally tough. You, and um, I can promise you, you have to be sound or get sound really quick when you, because you, you, you're around a lot of other people who have... Are not able to come out of jail. Yeah, yeah. And so they live yeah. in a certain way. And then this losing, like everybody won fortune is me. It was a lot of guys that went to trial and murder cases, lost. Mm -hmm. You know, I came back, you know what I mean? Some of them gave up on, you know, hope. Some of them didn't. But you know what I'm saying? It was just me. I was like, man, uh. What was that why factor for you, bro? Like, what was that one thing by you sitting in that cell and every night when they close it and you sit there by yourself? What was that why to say, I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to give up. I got to beat this case. I got to beat the next case. I got to because it because your cases was different. Some people they can beat that one case, but then if they get another one, they kind of lose hope. But if they get another one, they super. Deflated. But then if they get another, I mean, it'll it'll kind of knock the average Joe out. So what was that why that made you stay solid and was able to do that time and come home and do some good things? So we're gonna talk about the good things that you transformed into. Uh, it was it was uh actually uh the hope of seeing my kids again, never giving up. You know, I got a loving family, caring family. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it was just, man, you know, the how I was raised, man. Mm -hmm. By, you know, my mother, my grandmother, so strong. And uh, it was how I was raised. I couldn't give up. I couldn't uh, turn my back. And, you know, and you, I'm in the streets. Like, you know, I could have took the easy way out. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? But, you know, uh, like I said, I grew up in Trinidad. And I was raised by some individuals that, you know, I really respect and love. That was well respected. That taught me the ropes of the neighborhood. So mm. I had so to, you, you know, yeah, I had to stay down. And so I salute you for that. Um, so you didn't have your dad wasn't in your life. Ah, uh, no, nah, my dad wasn't in my no. life. So you know, what I'm saying like, you know, far as my coaches and me playing sports with like father figures and guys, you know, older from the neighborhood. From the neighborhood, you know, what I'm saying that I looked up to. Right. I got a lot of respect for the yeah. story, Cody. I like your backstory a lot. I'm going to talk about the one that's going forward now. But I just want to salute you, though, bro, before I even go forward to say I salute you for being a stand-up brother. Yeah. It's a lot of guys out here that wouldn't go to jail for a traffic ticket. Yeah. I'm just being honest. Um, yeah. But they got a lot of action. They, they really active out here, and they doing a lot of things, but they not going to jail, bro. I know they not. So I salute you for that, A. Um, and then coming home and turning your life around is the biggest thing I want to talk about. So now going forward, who's the new Cody? Uh, out of prison. Right, when you get out. Time. No. Now you got out. Now how do you go forward? Because you've been in prison for a while. 
Well, I, I, you know, I got out of prison and, you know, I just tried to make one more run in the streets. And I had got arrested for a distribution case that I was uh, found not guilty of. And I just knew that it wasn't no more money in the streets. So I had to, like, do something else. Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, when I come home, I throw a party. It was very successful. I mean, everybody came out. The city came out. I made some good money. So I say, oh, I like this. I like right. this. Right. So I got into the party business. I got into uh, throwing uh, parties and hosting and, and uh, promoting and things like that. Right. And, and doing things in the community as far as, like, uh, feeding the kids, getting their haircuts and things like that. So I, that's how it all started off. And uh it gave you a feeling, right? Yeah, it gave me a feeling you get. Yeah, it gave me a feeling. And then, you know, uh, you know, the Curtis Streets, uh, uh shout out to Ergo Weaver and uh Ronald Ronald uh Welly for uh mm -hmm. recruiting me to go to the uh to be get with the Curtis Streets movement. Curtis but that Street's was that movement. was crazy so because So did you know Eric prior to? Uh no, I knew his son. Oh, yeah, I knew, I knew okay. his son. Me and his son was in together. Yeah. And okay. I always heard about his father. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. you know, uh when I come home, they recruited me, and it was crazy because they asked me to come to the interview. So I say, where the interview at? So I put the interview in. I go to the interview. It's on. It's an old police station. So I'm like, yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. I'm like, hold, 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 hold now, hold now. Like, what's going on now? now? So when I go in right? there for my interview, they say, man, you gonna get this job by all the wrong you did. Tell your story. I'm like, man, tell my story. Is it bugs in here? Like, what? Well, there's a police station. Like, I, you know, it's still police cars out there. But, right. you know, uh, becoming part of Curtis Streets really changed my life as wow. me, as a man. Uh, you know, the people I met, the people I work with, you know, and just saving lives. Uh, I could say, you know, the Curtis Streets uh, team been up and running for three years now. Mm -hmm. Well, within that three years, uh, in our target area, where I work, we only had one homicide. Wow. In, in, in oh, three, in wow. Three years. Cody? Yeah, I do. Where we do interventions. We stop beefs. Uh, we probably mediated over, and we probably mediated over 250 uh, beefs and stopped. Really? Since so, three years. So this is what God had you to be here for. Like, I, I love guys like your story because my story is not way off from your story. I just been super blessed. Right, and mm. so that's why I'm still here. And yep. that's why you always hear me talk about God, Praise this God. God that on this platform. Because if it wasn't for God, I definitely would have been doing probably life in prison, um, to be mm. honest with you. I've been pretty blessed. So I'm thankful to have people like you to come on and share in that platform. People like Eric Weaver. Um, yeah, he's been on like, the show uh, before. Uh, what's the homie? I got his plaque, too. I got your plaque. Uh, Tony, 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 yeah, Tony. Free. I was with yeah, his I got father your plaque, riding. too, bro. Yeah, I, yeah. I remember yeah. these days. Yeah. I remember his father. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, so I was in that era. You know, that's when we was getting money. So I thank God for being able to spare my life and spare your life, and we still here, and we're able to do some good things for the community. So now going forward, what you guys got going on? Because I know you guys are doing some amazing things. Uh, right now, throughout the whole pandemic, I can say... Uh, you know, the Curtis Streets team and my organization, uh, where, where I'm the CEO of growing up, uh, we deal with troubled youth in the city. Uh, during this pandemic, we done fed uh, the whole community, the Trinidad, the Ira City community, even over southeast parts like that. Mm -hmm. uh, throughout the whole pandemic, uh, helping, you know, families with, you know, uh, needs via shoes, clothes, uh Wow. And things like that. And I'm also part of a uh, life enhancement. We deal on the mental health side. So I help people on the mental health side, too. Uh, so, you know, like... Doing some I love yeah. I think I've heard of life enhancement. Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's a nice organization. And then even with Curtis Streets, like, you know, uh, stopping these beefs, uh, making sure, you know, uh, the troops come in. But not just that. Taking these guns out of there, these guys' hands and replacing it with jobs. Program. That's what they, you know, do. things that's like that. Missing. Yeah, that's yeah, what they're yeah. missing. That's, that's 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 the wonderful part of doing this job. So just this is me as a, a girl growing up in the suburbs, not knowing a lot about the streets. But so being a violence interrupter, it doesn't give you feelings of like apprehension. Like I don't want to be out there with that. You know, like how does you don't feel no way about that? Uh -uh, like some, because we hire we hire a friendly community. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I'm from Trinidad, so I wouldn't go over and search a quarter to say stop the beef or stop. Right. I would hire, yeah, I'm going to okay. hire somebody from that neighborhood to do that. To do that. So in okay. my hood, you know, they respect me as, you know, the big homie and okay. things like that. So okay. coming to them, to telling them, you know, they know that, you know, uh, we don't 
cooperate with the police at all. Okay. Right. All their information with us is confidential. Confidential. You know, and things like and that. They so they can trust me. Right. right. You know what I'm saying? That's so, important. you know, okay. going to these other neighborhoods, knowing these good guys in there, bringing them together, saying, man, we're going to squash it. I you know, things that. like that. Like, uh, it's a wonderful feeling. I love it. It has to be because you're on the other side of the fence. You're doing some good things. You're sowing back into your community, which, if given a chance, a lot of us can do. Sometimes they bury us. Um, in prison and, and even worse before we get a chance to transition. So thank God you here yes. and you're doing the great things that you're doing. So what else you got going on? And um, oh, we got like right, four more minutes yeah, right now. They- right now we doing community events. We also got one tomorrow on uh, you know, 18th and M Street. Uh, 18th and M. Yeah, 18th and M Street Northeast. Uh, we doing a fish fry for the community. We are gonna okay. meet the A and C commissioners. That? And things like that. Uh, you what definitely time? you uh, from from six to ten. Six to ten. So you six definitely could go on. You know, you could Instagram Cure the Streets. Yeah. Cure the Streets uh, on IG. Yeah, on IG Instagram Cure the Streets. Uh, growing up on Instagram. Growing up and on Cody IG. X Is it on growing IG or growing. Growing G R O W I A E. So you know what I'm saying? Uh, you definitely could go in there and check out all our events. Uh, we definitely out in the community. But not just that. If you ride in our target areas, you will see our violence interrupters, our outreach workers. We got yellow shirts on. So Y'all everybody see us. Everybody see us out there in the community. And it's crazy because my community once frowned at me and didn't like the way I was carrying it. Now the neighbors hug me. And I that means it. so much to me now. Mm-hmm. But that's what I'm it. saying. That's the what transition, it. like a lot of times we don't get that chance. I thank God I had the chance to transition. And now I go back and I speak to some of these same youngins that was toting pistols and wearing vests and doing this and that. And so that's the area we come from, like I say. So this is the, such a blessing, man, to have you on the show and to share in your story. And um, I want you to make sure you tell them anything you want going, like closing out. What you want to tell them, what else coming up. Where can they follow any links or whatever you got? Give it up. We do have one question on here from one of our Facebook viewers. Cody says, ask him, where do you see yourself in five to ten years from now? Like, what do you see, no your question. Self what do you doing? Subject, see yourself doing? Yeah, uh, I, see, I see myself uh, owning my own businesses more, trying to bring uh, homes to uh, homeless uh, individuals mm-hmm. and uh, mental health individuals. And not just that, trying to bring the halfway house back to D.C. Okay. Yeah, the one they closed down over yeah. there. Yeah, that one okay. was kind of terrible too. So, but yeah, we definitely need that to happen. We need places to transition people in safe uh, environments and good environments to where they're not subject safe to crazy and clean. stuff. Safe, clean. That's so, right. So, um, yeah, I, give out all his information. Yeah, man, give out your information. I like what you're doing. Oh uh, yeah, man, you definitely can. Uh, you can get in contact and and reach out and see what you know we doing for, at uh, Cody X. That's my IG or Cure the Streets. On IG and also growing up. Uh, one thing about it, man, we out in the community. We keeping these communities safe. We out here changing the norm, man. So we definitely need all y'all support. So if y'all can log in and follow and definitely help out, it'd be an honor, man. I mean, it's an honor even coming here on this interview. This hey, is my first interview I did. Since I've been home, man, and everybody been trying to get me to do one, but I came so you here. You held out for spot. I held out for spot. Like the city, man. So let's give it up one more give time. Give it up, for y'all, for Cody Wynn. Hey, we appreciate that too, bro. We I do. appreciate you doing that we for do. us, and um, it's an honor to have you on the platform it as really well. Is. It's definitely an honor to see what you're doing in our community. We young kids out here need it, man. It's a lot of youngers out here that don't have nobody to sow into them, don't have nobody to reach back for them. And it takes a Cody Wynn and other people like yourself and uh, uh, Mobbish and the whole gang, all of them boys out there doing some things. We love you guys for what you're doing. Yes. And uh, keep doing what you're doing. And if doing. I'm Anything I can do or to help. Our company, uh, spotlight over city. Uh, it's a done deal. Stan will be out there in the streets with oh, the spotlight know, mics. I rock so, like that anyway. So I'm, let you us know, know. Whatever you're doing, if you need me to show up, I'm going to show up. Yes. Show That's up. right. Whatever you That's need, right. I'm going to show we up. We there. That's right. So that's how I'm rocking. So, yeah, uh, one more time. Let's give it up for Cody. Y'all, one more time. I love this. Y'all love it. People's Chamber Media, y'all. So, we- so mm. this is why we have a platform. Yes. Right? We have a platform so we can give people a voice that need to be heard. And um, this young man definitely needs to be heard. He's doing some amazing things. And um, not just him, a lot of people in our city. So we have an amazing city, too, man. Yes, we and, um, do. I DC or nothing. I appreciate the whole DC DMV movement um, to the fullest.